Well, good morning and holy greetings to you, brothers and sisters, and God bless you. This is Scott Bradley, and this is the Rivers of Life Inspirational Broadcast. We are grateful for you to tune in to this day, a day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. I'd like to invite all of you to come on in as we prepare to share with you a word from the Lord. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endureth to all generations. And I just can't help but praise and magnify the Lord because the Lord has been good to me and the Lord has been good to you. I know. So let's praise the Lord. Let's magnify God and rejoice in Him. Come on in and let's hear a word from the Lord. As we always ask you to do, please hit the share button. Let other people know that we're on. Whether you're viewing us live or whether you're viewing the playback on us. Let people know the world. Share this with someone else because I believe that the word that we have today is going to challenge us, is going to encourage us, is going to inspire us, and the word of God is right. I believe the Bible to be the inspired, only infallible word of God. I take no faith in the teachings of Buddha. I take no faith in the Quran. I take no faith in the teachings of other various ones. I believe the Bible is the only infallible word of God, and we're going to be sharing that with you today. Also, please let us know where you are viewing from. Feel free to leave your comments in the course of the message. Let us know where you're viewing from. If you're viewing us here in these United States, or if you're viewing us in other parts of the world, I thank God for you. God bless you. We're praying for you, and please pray for us as we go into the word of the Lord today. All right, God bless. Thank God. As you know, we, we've, been, well, we've been home a couple of weeks now from uh, Sierra Leone, West Africa. The effects of that, we're still having the effects and still hearing the uh, uh, feedback on that, on how the people were blessed uh, and even how uh, the word has gotten back to certain ones here in the United States uh, concerning the uh, ministry there. And I want you to pray for us. Also, I want to ask you, please, you that are viewing us by way of YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Uh, we need those subscriptions uh, because we're trying to build up the YouTube ministry the youtube channel we need your help all you got to do is prescribe you don't have to send any money or fill anything out just hit the subscribe button because you'll be notified anytime that we come on we usually come on every week of course and sometimes i'll drop a snippet sometimes the lord will lay something up on my heart and uh we'll while driving uh in the car excuse me while driving in the car we'll, we'll drop a, a snippet uh sometimes just Maybe five, ten minutes or something that the Lord lays upon my heart. And you'll always be informed when those things come to pass. Hey, visit our website, scottbradleyministries.com. Please go there and check out what we have, uh, things that we're doing. Uh, and I also want to invite you to our church, you that are in the Chicago area. We've just taken on a church now. It's been, oh, let's see, December, January, February, about three months now that we've been pastoring. A nice church there in uh, Chicago, Illinois, the Morgan Park, New Morgan Park, Church of God in Christ. Beautiful facility. We need to build up our membership. We need to build up, amen, and, and reach out to souls to come to the kingdom. And our theme is pointing souls to the cross. Uh, you can also view us every Sunday morning uh, at 1130 is when our service starts. 1101 West 100 and 11, let's see, 1101 West 111th Place, I have to remember, uh, which is right on the corner of 111th Place in Aberdeen in the city of Chicago. Sunday morning service starts at 11.30 a.m. Please come pay us a visit if you have nothing else to do. If you're looking for a church home, we're looking for sinners. Sinners that love, the, that, that want to turn their life around. We're not rejecting anyone. You know, somebody wants, or somebody, people oftentimes say, is this church uh, gay friendly? Well, I'll be very honest with you. We're friendly to everybody. But we're going to tell you the truth, you know. Now, if you want to come and be comfortable in your lifestyle, uh, I'm going to tell you if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're living together and you're not married, man, woman, we'll tell you that you're wrong. Because I'm trying to point you to the cross. I'm trying to tell you that holiness is right. I'm trying to tell you what God requires. And unfortunately, we have a lot of people today that have compromised that message. Well, yours truly is not going to compromise the message, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the good news that Jesus loves you. Uh, and, and, you know, there are a lot of myths that go around and myths that have been taught. You know, he loves you just as you are. Well, he does love you, but he does not love what you are if you are a sinner. Uh, meaning this, he wants you to turn from your way. He died for your sins. And that's not to say that, that we're free, that we don't sin. It's not what I'm saying. And I, and I want you to understand this because I want this to be clear 
on certain things because there are other folk that go to a self-righteous uh, attitude and say, I haven't sinned since I've been saved. Well, unless you got saved a minute ago or a day ago, I, I very seriously doubt that. Uh, and this is why Apostle Paul said, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. In other words, Jesus stands pleading for us. We have a high priest who is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, Hebrews, the fourth chapter says, for he was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Uh, shall we continue in sin, Paul says in the sixth chapter of Romans, that grace may abound. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer therein? So the mind of, of a person that has been born again is to give up the ways of sin, is to turn from sin. And even if we stumble, repent, pick yourself up, repent, and move forward. Don't just wallow in your sin. Don't just continue to be a sinner. Because there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. See, that's where the eternal security comes, in Christ. If we are no longer walking in Christ, we are no longer walking in the security. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. So again, I'm throwing that in there. I'm, I'm saying all are welcome to come. All black, white, rich, poor, bound, free, gay, straight. Come on. Just come on. Come on. You know, uh, <laughs> The Bible said, come just as you are. No, it doesn't. The Bible doesn't say that. But I'm saying that you come and hear a word. And a word from the Lord is life-changing. And that's what we want. We want to be changed. We want to be changed from the inside out. All right, that's not the message. That's just a little pre-preaching -pre -pre there. But there's something I want to deal with today concerning the church and concerning we that are walking with the Lord. How sometimes our testimony can be more devastating than helpful. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes we unconsciously testify on the strength of the devil. You know, te testify. You know, the devil told me this, and the devil told me don't do that, and the devil, the devil, and the devil told me. You know, it, it, testimony is not a time to talk about the devil, except that the devil tried, but I've got the victory. Not just going on and how strong the devil is, how great the devil is, what the devil did, what the devil said. Jesus said the devil is a liar and the father of lies. And you can't put any stock in the lies of the devil. Unfortunately, a lot of the lies that the devil tells us can be convincing and even intimidating unless we know that victory is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to read an episode from the Bible. Uh, from the book of Numbers, the 13th chapter, starting at verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, meaning the promised land, for we are well able to overcome it. This is the testimony of Caleb, uh, one of the sons, one of the, the, the uh, 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 two that came back with a glory, glorious report. Uh, Moses had, ten sp had sent spies. Now understand, the people of God were on the edge, on the outskirts of the promised land. And Moses tent sent 12 spies to go in and spy out the land. And they came back with the testimony. Caleb said, the first one to testify, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Verse 11 says, but the men that went up with him said, we are not able <coughs> to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report. Notice what the Bible calls this, an evil report. Not a bad report, not a negative report, you know, evil. And I'm going to deal with that in a few seconds. Why it was referred to as an evil report. Uh, and th they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched until the children of Israel, saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up with the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Now immediately... The shift begins to change from the strength of God that brought us this far to the opposition or the enemy and how strong they are. Verse 33, and we saw their giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Now, again, glorifying the enemy and all the congregation up their voice and cry. And the people wept that night on the outskirts, on the edge of the miracle. And instead of rejoicing, they were influenced by the glorification of 
the enemy. Notice the Bible called it evil, an evil report. Why did the Bible refer to this evil? Again, it could have said a bad report, a negative report. Uh, you know, they opposed what Caleb said. Why was it called evil? Well, first of all, the problem was they glorified the enemy in opposition to the strength of God. They had forgotten, unlike Caleb and Joshua, who was another of the, that gave a good report, they glorified and had forgotten what God had already done. Where they were was as a result of the miracle, a series of miracles that the Lord had performed to bring them to this point. Meaning this, uh, here was a generation, <clears throat> pardon me, here was a generation that had seen the hand of God unlike any of the previous generations. Understand that uh, Israel had been in bondage for 450 years. Generation lived, generation died, waiting on the promise, and it did not happen in their lifetime. And you have to always understand, God's got a time, and, and, and you can't rush the time of God. This is why oftentimes uh, when I hear people say that Jesus is going to come and they give dates when Jesus is going to return and the rapture is going to take place, Jesus even told us, don't even believe it, because of that day and hour knows no man, not the angels in heaven, not even the Son. Now, why is God going to bypass the Son? bypass the angels, bypass the high-ranking angels, seraphims, cherubims, angels of heaven. Why is he going to bypass all of them, not reveal to them when he's going to come, and yet give it to a person? That within itself doesn't even make sense. Why are you more in position to hear from God above those others, angels, and even the Son, when he speaks of the Son, not God the Son, but the man, because again, Jesus was all man and all God, the Man did not know, but of course, Jesus, God, did know. And yet he bypasses all of them to tell you. Something ought to tell you right away something is wrong with that idea. So Jesus is coming June 14th. You know, no, don't even pay that any attention. Don't even pay that any attention. And I've heard people do that. Then when the date comes and goes, and well, I miscalculated. There is no calculation to let you know. All you know are the signs. And he said, be ready, for you know not the day nor the hour when he comes. Now, again, I'm somewhat straight off the subject here, but I'm, I'm trying to, to bring out the point that when we forget what God has done, and this is why this report that we're not able to go up against the enemy, we can't fight against the enemy, the enemy is stronger than us, they had forgotten. Going back to the point, generation lived and generation had died, previous to this generation, that had waited on the promise of God, waited for deliverance, waited for them to be brought out. They lived and they died for 450 years. Why was this report that they said we can't overcome the people evil was because this generation has seen the hand of God like no other generation previous to this time waiting on the promise. And understand, when Moses went down and stretched out his rod against Pharaoh and Egypt, every plague above all of the ten plagues that came forth, every plague was a direct challenge to the small G-O-D gods of Egypt. So Israel watched God in his glory stand in defense and defy and defeat every false Egyptian God. Because previous to that time, all they heard about was the strength of the Egyptian gods. All they heard about was the Egyptians talking about how great their gods were. All they saw was, was you know, really not really a demonstration, just they saw their status as opposed to the Egyptian status. And, and you know, must be something to their God because their God, our God has done nothing they would have in their mind. And here's a generation now that sees the hand of God in defiance of every Egyptian God. And not only was the Lord proving to Egypt who he was, he was proving to his own people who he was. Nobody had saw the power of God. No generation had saw the power of God as demonstration like this generation saw. And then on top of that, when they ran from the Egyptians, and the Egyptians pursued them. And in the wilderness, to show you the mentality of these folk, in the wilderness, they began to talk about my grave was back in Egypt. Why did you bring us here to die? Moses, they, they, they just fussed and complained. And the Bible declared that when Moses cried to God, the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? What is that that's in your hand? It's a stick. It's a rod. 
Isn't that the same rod? And I'm paraphrasing, of course. Isn't that the same rod that I told you to stretch out and turn the Nile River into blood? Isn't that the same rod I told you to stretch out and bring the hail mingled with fire? Isn't that the same rod? Oh, the list went on. Every time Moses stretched out his rod and deliverance came and power of God, the demonstration of God's power came. Isn't that the same rod? Don't cry to me. Take that same rod, stretch out over the sea and divide it. And the people saw with their own eyes the miraculous power and demonstration of God. Now, now here they are on the outskirts, right on the edge of the promised land. And what do they do? They glorify the enemy. That's why it's evil. That's why it's evil. Because right away you forget what God has done. You forget what the Lord has done for you. And brothers and sisters, when we begin to glorify the devil, begin to glorify the enemy, begin to glorify the opposition, it's not just negative, it's evil. Because I want you to understand and reiterate to you that you, I'm sure you already know, that we have come this far as a result of the strength of God. I was looking at something uh, on, on Facebook the other day. They get these, put these little snippets up, and they talked about some of the most persecuted religions in the world. Some of the most persecuted religions in the world. They went through something I hadn't even heard of, you know. But they said the number one religion in the world of persecution is Christianity. Christianity is still the number one religion that's being persecuted. Some, some countries will not allow Christianity. Some countries will not allow. It's illegal to have a Bible. Some uh, countries, they have to have church that is controlled by the government. Some countries, they have to have church underground in secret because to do so is uh, face penalties of prison. In some cases, the penalty of death, beheading, if you are openly declaring yourself a Christian in certain countries. Christianity. Why? Well, why is the devil intimidated by Christianity more than anything else? Because other religions oftentimes are persecuted because of their political stance. Christianity is persecuted because of its faith in God. Why? Because the devil knows the threat of Christianity when sinners hear the gospel message, they will turn from their ways and begin to follow Christ. Most persecuted religion in the world, according to this uh, poll, and, you know, even Jesus said and told us we will be hated by all nations for his namesake. There are people that think that by killing you, that they are doing a service for God. And they don't know the Lord. They don't know the Lord. They don't know the God of the Bible. Or oh, they're calling on a God. But they don't know the God of the Bible. Well, getting back, going back to my original point, this report that was made by these ten spies glorifying the enemy how strong the enemy was, how there were giants, and, and even compared themselves. We look like grasshoppers in the, in the face of the Anakims, and the Anakims was a race of giants and glorified the enemy. God called it evil. But what happens when we glorify the enemy? Number one, we show no confidence in God. Wait a minute, didn't God bring us this far? Didn't God demonstrate his power? Didn't God stand in defiance of every one of those Egyptian gods and show that he was the true and the living God? And this generation saw it like no generation previous to this time. You know, brothers and sisters, I know that there's some of you that call yourself cessationalists. In other words, you don't believe in miracles. You don't believe, you believe all that cease. You believe that there are no prophets of today. You believe that, that, that miracles don't happen. You, you know, and I really feel sorry for you because you're living beneath your privilege. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying you're going to hell. That's not my call anyway. But I'm saying that by, by believing that, you're living beneath your privilege because yes, God still works miracles. Yes, there's still healings that take place. I've seen them happen. And, uh, you know, others that have seen them happen. Well, See, this generation, to be very honest with you, has seen, it looked like even within the past hundred or so years, have seen the demonstration of God's power like no generation previous to this time. You know, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the scripture says in the last days, and I believe that we're in the last days, he would pour out his spirit upon for all flesh. Your sons and your daughters would prophesy. Well, we see that today. Uh, the miracles would revive. The miracles would take place. Some of y'all just feel like it ain't going to happen. That's that's all psychological. Ain't have, some things are beyond explanation when God really works a miracle, and he does. And I'm a believer in miracles. And I believe because we're in the last days, we're seeing a demonstration of God's power that previous generations didn't see. Frequently, often. Now, I know there are shysters. I know there are liars. You know, I know there are, there are hooks, uh, hucksters. And, 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 you know, I know God's going to deal with them. 
But some miracles that take place cannot be denied. It's a miracle from the Lord. Hallelujah. God can do it. Filling with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Man, I don't believe that. Man, that was for that day. The reason why well, you come with all kinds of explanations. I've experienced it, and others have experienced the miracle of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, like in the Bible today, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, whether you believe it or not, it happens. And by you just shutting down and don't believe it, you are not allowing yourself to experience the fullness of God. Now, Again, I'm not saying that you're going to hell. That's not what I'm saying. You know, if you, you're saved and confess in your mouth. We're not saved by works. I understand that. And uh, you're going to go to heaven. What I'm saying is that you're living beneath your privilege. I'm not here to fight you and mess with you and, and, and call you sin. I'm not, not doing that. I'm simply saying that by not believing, and why could Jesus not work miracles in his day? Anytime he got, when he got to his hometown in Capernaum, the Bible said that he couldn't do any works because the people did not believe. If you don't believe, you're not going to be a recipient of the miracle. But I'm saying all that to say this. This generation, within the past hundred years, has seen the evidence of the power of God like no generation looked like priests at that time, except in the first century. And into uh, a few centuries following, except in remote cases. What is the point? Anytime we don't believe, we are not going to be the recipient. And as a result, certain promises you are not going to inherit. This whole generation of, Egypt, of Israelites that were the recipients of the hand of God, saw the hand of God firsthand, did not enter the promise because they did not believe and in essence glorified the enemy. They forgot the might of God. God did this. And you know, brothers and sisters, sometimes you ought to look back on yourself and realize I'm where I am because of the strength and the grace of God. You know, things have happened in my life, even here in recent years, uh, and things that are, that are on, the, on, the, on the verge of happening, it, it appears. I never had ambition for a lot of these things. <coughs> they just happen. They happen in time. And in season, God always had a plan for my life, like yours. I'm not saying this to make myself exclusive. I'm simply saying that every one of us, God has a plan. And let me throw this here once again. I've said this on numerous occasions. It doesn't matter how you got here. You were destined to be here. I'll tell you all the story about my daddy told me once he had another girlfriend before he met my mother. And if he had married her, I wouldn't have been born. And I told you this story. And I said, well, daddy, one way or another, I was going to get here. And I, I really believed that even then at, at 8 or 10 years old, whenever he told me that. And, and I believed that I was destined to be here. It doesn't matter how you got here. If you were here because your daddy raped your mama, your daddy didn't like your mama, your daddy and your mama never got married. You were, oops, baby, we didn't mean to have you. It doesn't matter. You've got to change your attitude concerning yourself and realize I was destined to be here. And I'm destined to be here with a purpose. You have purpose, sir. You have purpose, ma'am. Doesn't matter how you got here. Start looking at yourself differently and realize you have a purpose for being here. And God, as I heard one of my mentors used to always say, God held you back in the wheels of time for such a time as this. I like that. God held you back in the wheels of time. You could have been born 100 years ago. You could have been born in, in another country. Oh, that's the thing that always gets me. I could have been born in another country that does not have the, the, the privilege that, that I have here in the United States. Really. You know, I mean, and, and I was when I was in Africa the other week, one of the young African brothers said to me, I was showing him something on, on YouTube, and he said, America's a wonderful country. Well, he lives in Africa. And he sees the, the clips. Now, again, I know all the faults in America. I know all the problems in America. I know all the insights in America because I'm a resident here. And, uh, but then when I compare myself to where I could have been born, I could have been born in communist Russia, communist China, Vietnam. Oh, my God, I could have been born any place in poverty. And the Lord blessed me. I glorify the Lord. And, and, and having the opportunity and the privilege to preach this gospel freely. And see the hand of God in ministry and see the might of God. Yes, I've come this far by the strength and the blessing of the Lord. What kind of person would I be to go and, and foolishly give the glory to somebody else? No, sir, no, ma'am, I would not do that. The Lord is good. And here's the thing that you have to understand, brothers and sisters. If I can make this comparison, no real father. I'm not talking about a sperm donor. 
I'm not talking about those people that got kids all over the place and you take care of none of them. See about none of them. And, and uh, you know, you some of them you never even met. You know, you're not a man. You're just a sperm donor. You're not a father. You're just a sperm donor is what it burns, boils down to. You know, and you, you cut them off and, and, and then you show up years later smiling. Your kids don't want to be bothered with you because you were not there. You know, my point is this. No real man. And that doesn't include all y'all. Just because you have a male, male genitalia, you're still not a man, you know. But no real man wants his children calling another man daddy. You know, I told y'all a story before when I was a, a, a youngster and I was single. And uh, there were these cute little twins in church. And they used to just love me. They'd run, they'd crawl up on my lap. And I told them, y'all call me daddy. Now, I was not a father. I was not their father particularly. I was, was just a, a guy in church, a young minister, and the little, little cute little twins you, be gravitate toward me and climb on my lap, and I just take them and cuddle them and whatnot. And I said, y'all call me daddy. And their mother said, don't you call him that. I mean, look like I had an attitude with, don't you call him that. That's not your father. And I didn't understand. What, what, what's the harm? What's the, well, I later realized as a grown man and a father, I don't want my children calling nobody else daddy. Oh, Reverend, you ought to get daddy. No, no, no. I don't like the idea of my children calling another man daddy. This is daddy. I'm the one that provide for you. I'm the one that raised you. They're grown now and gone, you know. Uh, I'm the one that feeds you. I'm the one that clothes you. I'm the one that takes care of you. I'm the one that prays for you. I'm the one that looks out for you. Don't call another man daddy. And you know what? That's what it's like, the insult that it's like. When God blesses us, and we turn around, forget about God, his strength, his might, his power that has brought us this far, and call another person daddy or glorify another confrontation. Didn't daddy bring you this far? Didn't daddy bless you? Hasn't daddy kept you? And you turn around out of, after all of that and glorify the strength of the enemy. It's an evil report, what the Bible calls it. Oh, let me see if I can get the rest of this in here. Notice what he says. Uh, uh, if you have faith and not doubt, and this was the problem why they forgot about God, because they doubted. And sometimes God shows up. And we still give glory to something else. We even give it to coincidence. Well, that's a coincidence. How dare? How dare you call God just a coincidence? How dare you glorify the strength and the glory of God to coincidence? God is in control. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. And God saved your life. You know, here's the thing that happened recently. I was coming back again from, from Africa, uh, and I was on the plane, and uh, I was next to a couple, young couple, had a young baby. And uh, there was a little shelf there that they had set the baby on in, in the baby's little crib. And... Uh, somewhere along the flight, she took the baby off of the shelf and put the baby in the seat. And the stewardess came by and opened up the overhead and something fell, blam, and crashed right onto that platform that the baby was. And I thought, God, have mercy. What if the baby had still been up there? And the mother, she got very upset. If my baby had been up there, she'd have been killed. And <laughs> looked like or severely injured. But at that moment, she took the baby out of that shelf and set the baby in the seat. And when that stewardess came along and opened it up, that big, heavy, whatever it was, fell and crash, crash, just crashing the thing. It could have killed the baby. It was just a baby. And I thought, Lord, thank you for your hand. And I didn't know the people. I didn't know the mother. I didn't, I didn't, we hardly spoke. Just, hello, how are you? You know, cute baby, you know. But that baby's life was preserved because God put it in the mother's heart to move him from that shelf and put the baby in the seat. What could have happened? And how many of y'all know in your life what could have happened? So I don't glorify the devil. I glorify God. God is worthy of the praise. When you glorify the enemy, time is almost up here. You, you, uh, uh, it's a psychological effect. Notice what happened to the people when they heard the majority. And see, sometimes when you're standing with God, you're not always in the majority. There were two against ten. 
Two said, let us go up at once. Joshua and Caleb. Ten said, we can't go. And they talked about how strong the enemy was. They talked about the sons of Anakim, the Anakims, the giants went to land. They talked about the, 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 and you know, the thing about that, they came back with the evidence of God's promise. It was no longer rumor. Now it was evidence. They brought back with a, uh, the Bible said a cluster of bricks so big until two men had to hold them on a, on a harness and bring them in. They saw the, the, the fruit. They saw her, how the, la uh, the, the land was truly like God said, a land flowing with milk and honey. And, the, they, 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 and Joshua got up and testified. And you know, sometimes uh, they should, as I oftentimes say in jest, of course, they should have cut testimony service off after Caleb. Because when the other folk wouldn't testify, they start talking negative. They start talking about the evil, uh, an evil report, you know. And so what happened? They, they glorified the enemy and had a psychological effect on the people. And brothers and sisters, you can't always listen to negative stuff, particularly when you're going through things. Particularly when you're trying to get a blessing from the Lord. Don't let the testimony, the negative testimony, influence and destroy. Regardless of the strength of the enemy, God is bigger. Regardless of what the devil tries, God is bigger. And I dare not give the devil the satisfaction of knowing what he tried to do. He's a liar. My God is bigger. And he told me if I have faith, I can say to my mountains, be picked up and cast into the sea and not doubt. It'll come to pass just like he said. This is no time to glorify the enemy. This is time to magnify God. Oh, I didn't even get to David. I want to talk about how Saul tried to, to, to magnify the strength of Goliath. But God, David testified. I didn't get to that. Hallelujah. I'll get to it next time. My time is up. Listen, I want you to, uh, uh, you that are this via YouTube, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. I pray that you be blessed by the word of God today. I pray that you be blessed and hear this. Share it. Let us know where you're viewing from. Until next week, this is Scott Bradley saying God bless you. We thank God for you. We're praying for you. Pray for us. We will talk to you again real soon. God bless.